and let's begin. So again, the, the topic is about SMART, which you know the acronym is for Self-Monitoring Analysis and Reporting Technology. So as written as SMART. When you have your DSSB 6, typically, again, SMART is related with software RAID, not hardware RAID. So if you have a hardware RAID controller, you're not going to be able to utilize the SMART functionality. In the hardware RAID controller, you do have capabilities of setting up the monitoring capability so that way you get reports, emails, or issues with your array controller or the array itself with the hard drives. But with the software RAID, you can. So typically, you have the uh, RAIDs that, arrays that you built for your software RAID directly using your motherboard, as many will use. Um, it's also available in the full version as well as the DSS Lite version. So here we see the, I have uh, my uh, units ready and available. Uh, if I click on my MD0, which is my first one, uh, we see that I have, you know, the drives that are set with my Western Digitals here. Um, so if we decide to use SMART, many of you will go right into, going right into the setup and hardware and try to enable the SMART. And if you could see right here, this option needs to be enabled. Or some will say, I've been looking for SMART, I go to status, and I go into SMART, but I don't get the information because the SMART option is not enabled. Okay, so what do you do? Very simple. Uh, first, I like to connect through the console screen to be able to access the, to enable the SMART, instead of just going right up to the system. Many of you use this uh, functionality. It's the remote console access, so just be aware to set this up uh, using PuTTY. More information on how to do this, you just click on the question mark and you'll have the information how to connect to the console screen without physically walking up to the system and turning on the monitor or the keyboard. So this, this really helps you save time uh, learning the remote console access functionality that we have. Well, I've already uh, have a PuTTY session open. As you can see here, I've logged in with uh, the basic uh, user access is CLI and of course the password is the GUI password. Now, many of you, if you're not familiar with using the console screen, it's very simple. Uh, if you use the F1 key, you'll see you have a list of optional commands that you can perform. What we're going to be focusing on is right down here where my arrow is pointing is the Control-Alt-W is to run the hardware configuration. So let's go ahead and access that first. So I go Control-Alt-W. Of course, it's going to ask you for the password. So this is the GUI password that you've already pre-assigned the DSSV6. By default, the password installed DSSV6 is going to be admin, and that's all lowercase. Uh, where I'm going to go is to the option one, which is the functionality options for smart. And here we see that it's not enabled. So this is what you want to enable so that we can get the readout in the monitoring, analysis, and reporting for the hard drives. So we'll just hit the space bar, then hit apply. And we're pretty much done at that point for the console screen. So let's go ahead and exit. We'll just bring this down here. Now let's go back to the DSS. And where we want to go to is the setup and hardware option. And here we'll be able to enable the smart now for our arrays and or drives. Now once you've done this, you need to set up the email um, functionality in DSSV6. Uh, this is important or you will not be able to get the full readout or you won't be able to enable the smart functionality. I've already set it up, but let's just go over it just so everybody understands. Here you want to go to Setup, Administrator. We're going to go to the email notification. And I've already set it up for an email account. Now I'll it test it by setting up the email account, the authentication name, uh, and the password. And here my outgoing mail server, SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol for server is what I'm using right here. Now you can show advanced and have other ports uh, signed, assigned for your outgoing mail server or, or have it encrypted and you can add to other destination emails as well. But well, for basic support, what we want to do for this like, examination is to be able to apply this and be able to test that we're receiving emails. So now we're going to use, I got my Windows Live email, very simple. 
and I have an account set up, and here we see that the connection test is completed. So this was just sent because we're on Eastern time. It's 2.08 right now. So we know that our e email is functioning. This is very important with SMART, and also you should have this set up with DSS as well because for other functionalities, if you have issues on your replications, maybe something is overfilled and snapshot doesn't work, you're going to want some type of alerting system. And so the emails uh, system functionality that we have in DSS really helps on that. So you want to set up your email, and once you've done that, now we can go ahead and verify SMART is working. To verify, what you want to do is go right into the status and then go to SMART and give it a second, and it's going to verify the units. The health status has passed, and let's go take one look at one of our units here. Here we're going to select unit S00, actually it's triple zero, and here we see that it's passed. It's identifying the device model. We see that it's a Western Digital. Uh, it provides information about the serial number and firmware version. So this is really helpful, especially if you're uh, really wanting to make sure that uh, what is your firmware, if you have the latest, always recommend updating the drives with the latest firmware, as there always are some changes. Now comes in the more detailed information. And here you get the attribute information, which is really important. You can see that the all the information that we have from the raw read error rates, spin-up times, um, a lot of the seek air rates many of people are interested in and of course um, you want to get into temperatures a lot of times I see issues where a lot of hard drives do get hot um, and a lot of and you want to get this information from your RAID controller but if you're using the software RAID you really want to get the temperature I've seen cases where you know, you're replicating millions of files and the spindles on the drives are really moving fast and of course this generates a lot of heat and if it's not enough, if they're not cooling very well then uh, of course, it can have issues, and you can get in some type of corruption if that's the case. So you want to keep an eye on it. So you want to be, if some of these counts and information in the reporting is very important. If you have errors, you can click on the view errors and be able to identify which of the items you're having errors on to one of these related um, attribute names. Now, on the bottom here, I won't perform the test because it will take too long for the webinar, but just for a very quick information, you can run a short test or a long test for your drives. I've had some customers that actually do the software RAID first before they put the drives on the software on the RAID controller, so that way they can get more diagnostics on the software RAID than versus some of the RAID controllers that are out there. Um, although this can take some time, but it adds another value of protection, protecting your data. So if you start the short test or the long test, uh, bear in mind they do take some time, and then, of course, you can view the results. The more information you can find on the question mark as it provides additional information about the functionality of the tool. Again, if you look at some of the parameters here where we specify, um, you can see some of the status is failed or pre-failed, uh, attributes unknown, um, this is information that might be helpful for you. Uh, additionally, there are some, um, the SNMP that can be used with some of the uh, MIB2 standards that we comply to. That's because we are SNMP version 2 and 3. So SMART's very simple. I mean, it's, this whole webinar was really short demonstration because we've had some customers ask about this and how to enable SMART. And a lot of them just go right in the beginning to the status smart and they find out that it's not available due because you have to enable it through the console stream. So that's pretty much the wrap up of this webinar. I do want to mention to you everybody there's a new release coming out. Currently I'm using the latest one right now that's officially being released which is 5845. Uh, we are coming out with another release at the end of this month. Please be aware of that. And if you're always needing questions and information at the uh, OpenE website I recommend using the search engine tool. Also, we have in our support, here is where the libraries and the knowledge base articles, the data sheets, white papers, all the way down to the webcasts and videos. And here's where we store all the videos, all the previous videos, and there will always be added more. 
So with that, I thank everybody for showing up to this short webinar. I know a lot of people are busy and they're asking them to keep shorter, and I hope this helps. And thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.